have a rising second grader? In this video, I'm going to go over everything we used for second grade math, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor lawyer turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages 8, 5, and 3. In this video, I'm going to go over an array of things that we used for second grade math. Now just to give you some background, my son likes math, he does not love math, and he's pretty much on grade level. So if you have a grade level kid, um, these supplies might be useful to you. We used a spread of workbooks, but we also used some manipulatives, and I didn't bring all of them down, but I wanted to show you two of his favorites. In terms of core curricula for math this year, I definitely think that our spine was formed by this mathematical reasoning workbook, Level C by Critical Thinking Company. I did an in-depth review of this, which I will link up above if you wanna see it in more detail. Right now, I'll just do a quick flip through for you. This book is designed to be used either as a supplement or as core curricula. I definitely think it covers a huge variety of topics. It's really good for a child who doesn't like drill work because as you can see, each page is not very excessive, but it does go over like a variety of different types of concepts. Everything from double digit addition and subtraction to basic multiplication, fractions, proportions. It does a really good job of incorporating real life math, some money skills. Um, I would say it's pretty weak in terms of time skills, but honestly the way I teach time is mostly through like real life, like looking at clocks. So they do have some here, but very little. Uh, does a good job of holding um, a child's interest though, because it is very colorful and varied. The next main part of our core curricular for math was definitely Singapore math, the US edition. I prefer the US editions for Singapore math to any of the others. Um, I think it follows much more the original philosophy than any of the others. So the textbook for Singapore math comes in color like this, and it's designed to be discussed with your students. So the book isn't really designed to be written in, which I like because you can use it for subsequent kids. And it does a really nice job of talking about place value, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication with these very graphic illustrations of what exactly is going on. It also has good sections on length and measurement and three digit arithmetic. This is the accompanying workbook for the 2A level. And I really liked it. Honestly, we had a little bit of an issue with Singapore math this year because my son just started to find it a little bit tedious uh, because it definitely does have more problems on any given page in general than um, mathematical reasoning. It's not as colorful and you just started to find it a little bit tedious. So we pulled back a little bit from this in the middle of the year and start to focus more on mathematical reasoning, but I plan to finish the 2B workbook over the summer. In terms of Singapore math, I really like it. I think it does a great job of incorporating number theory and actual like fundamentals of mathematics into their practice. Since my son was having this period of pulling away from Singapore math and reluctance to do it, I am switching over to Math Mammoth for next year. And we're just going to see how it works. If it works for him, great. If it doesn't, I am ready to go back to Singapore Math um, 3A and 3B. We really enjoyed this Kumon Book of Money, Dollars and Cents, too. It's a very slow progression of understanding. So I had to do very little explanation. It's a very, very gradual progression. So he could understand, like, every time you add a penny, you're just going to go up a cent. Every time you add a nickel, you're going to go up by five cents and so on and so forth. Though it does get a little bit boring, I really appreciate how they use actual pictures of the dollars and cents. They use both sides of them, as you can see, so they recognize that you know a dime from either side is still a dime. Though I believe there is a page where he was working on it and then he wrote um, something like, boring. <laughs> And I said, I agree there because, you know, it's important to understand what your kid is going through. And he said this was boring and so he didn't want to trace over the numbers and I said, no problem. So sometimes there is a little push and pull here. He didn't actually answer this one. So I just point out to him when he just missed one. But I like how simple and orderly it is and we will be definitely using the same exact book for my daughter when she gets to that level. 
critical thinking company. I love Mindbenders. I've talked about them several times before. He did the level one book last year, and this year we went ahead and finished the level two book. It has these logic puzzles in it, so there's clues as you can see, and based on the clues they have to decide, solve the mystery basically. I used to do these in gifted class. I remember them very fondly. When I found them, I was really happy, and he enjoys them, so we try to do one or two a day. This is the Evan Moore Daily Word Problems book for math for grade two. I had no real issue with this book. We actually didn't finish it. It just didn't work out with our scheduling because we do math for a set amount of time a day. We don't do it for a set amount of pages. You know, I let him kind of choose like which math book he'd like to use that day, so long as we're progressing in any one of them. He didn't really choose this one very often. And we also don't work well with the daily format, like do one problem a day. In general, when he would work on this book, he would do the week at a time. The problems are good, you know, like it's designed to be just one page a day. It's kind of designed uh, for teachers, I think, who make photocopies. So they can just photocopy this and that can be the Monday sort of warm up for math. If you like that style, like if you have a daily notebook or something like that, I think this might be a really good book for you. For us, I don't know, for, for how easy the problems were, like you can see this is already page 33, but it's just 12 minus four. I mean, if, you, if your child doesn't have a good sense of how to answer a word problem, this is a really good book, a gentle approach. If your child does know how to though, it's not really that helpful. Um, in terms of just supplementary workbooks, I have a bunch of workbooks like this that I've picked up from the Dollar Tree or from thrift stores. These are made by the Clever Factory and I have a bunch of them. Um, they just have like drill pages like this, simple drill work, some word problems, just pages full of drill work. They're really simple. Like I said, this is one grade level before, this is grade one, and I use one level before for drill work so that I can just keep his number facts up to date. So what we do is we set a timer and we say like, how many can you do in a minute? And then we just count and kind of try to beat our last number, you know? So it's a really easy going way of just keeping drill work up to speed. In terms of manipulatives, these were definitely some of his favorites for the year. These are learning wrap-ups. I'm sure some of you have seen them. We have all four, so we have the subtraction, addition, multiplication, and division wrap-ups. Basically what the child does is you figure out which one you're going to do. So let's say we're going to do the four times tables. You start off at the start point with the thread, and the child simply does the math. So one times four is four and then three times four is 12. 12 times four is 48. And basically by the time they finish it entirely, I'm just gonna stop it here, they can turn it around and it's self-correcting for them. So if you can see here, there's an actual little raised indentation right there where that thread went. There's another indentation right here where that thread went or not indentation rather, but like a raised line. So once he finishes it, all the threads should be crossing exactly where they've already marked. And it's just a nice, fun, physical way of practicing your math facts. Um, he really enjoys it. It's almost like a fidget, you know? It's one of those things we would pull out sometimes, not during math, but during reading, etc. And it just gave him a way to um, do his math. Another thing like this that we were using was a multiplication wheel. Um, from like a Waldorf seller on Etsy. And I wish I had brought it down, I didn't, but if you follow me on Instagram, you can scroll back a few months and you can see it. It looks like a little wooden circle with um, raised prongs and you can do the same thing like factorial math and create shapes. Before I take this away though, I just wanted to show you, when you buy the set, um, it also comes with these CDs. So it has like little um, math facts on audio for you. Another fun manipulative that we used this year was this, which he loved. So if you have a kid who likes Sudoku, they um, might really enjoy this, especially if they're a little bit more tactile because this is a raised Sudoku board. It has little indentations so that the numbers can't move around too easily, but they just lift up right out. And it is a box that has its own drawer. So each of these little Sudoku tiles can be organized and put away on its own. If you wanna do like Montessori math with a littler kid too, this is a nice way of just getting these little wood tiles with numbers on them for math practice. When you slide open the drawer, you can find right here a little Sudoku booklet with problems set up for you, as well as some extra tiles in case you lose them. And basically the way the booklet works is 
it shows you how to set up any given problem. So here, this is how you set up the board. And if you'll notice, the tiles actually have two colors on them. So like this tile has a, a black side and a red side. And so what we do is for the ones that are marked that we know are gonna stay there, we put the red ones down. And then he fills in by using the black ones. I think there's about a hundred puzzles in this book. So it's quite a lot and it'll keep your child occupied for quite a while. Of course, if you have an actual Sudoku book, you can also set up Sudoku puzzles that way because you can just set them up to match whatever booklet you have. Um, it doesn't have to be this one. So he really enjoys this. It's a really fun game. For those of you who don't know how to play Sudoku, basically you fill up this giant three by three type of grid with nine digits in each grid. And you can only have the numbers one to nine in any given row or column, but also within any given square, they can only be one to nine. So you can't have like three and three in one square or three and three in one line. Um, it's a really nice way of practicing like number recognition, where things could be, logic skills, etc. cetera. Um, I think playing games is a great way of learning math. Even things like Monopoly is a great way of learning like money sense and how to subtract hundreds, etc. cetera. So game schooling is definitely a way that we learn math. And um, I'll be doing an updated game schooling video soon. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below. So that's basically our wrap up, you guys, of what kinds of things we've been using this year for math for second grade. I hope it's been helpful. If you guys have any suggestions for um, what you might be using for third grade, I would love to hear it. I'm going to be doing a video on our plans for third grade soon. But I find end of the year reviews even more helpful in a way because it tells you sort of what worked and what didn't. For example, this didn't work for us. Thanks so much for watching. As always, you guys, I wish you the very best day and good luck with all your curriculum planning.